Hey, what's going on, Matt? This is Parker with Uncharted Recreation in Meridian, Idaho. And uh, sorry for the background noise here. Hopefully it doesn't pick up too much on the, uh, the camera here, but I wanted to make this quick walkthrough video for you on this 2021 Sunseeker um, E450. This is the uh, 2500 TS model uh, with full body paint. It's got lots of extras that we'll go into, um, but wanted to show you the current condition of this unit um, and do a quick little walkthrough for you because um, I understand you're out of state. Uh, this might do it a little bit more justice than just a few photos. So first and foremost, uh, before I get started here, I do want to mention this unit hasn't been detailed or cleaned. Uh, we haven't run it through our shop just yet, like I kind of mentioned over the phone. So uh, you got to use your imagination a little bit. It's going to be a little dirty, but for the most part, I really haven't seen anything uh, wrong with this unit. Um, but correct me if I'm wrong while you're watching the video here, but uh, I'll try to be as thorough as I can. Uh, but I don't, also don't want to make this video extremely long either. So I'll try to give you a good balance here. So starting at the front here, I'll kind of go around the hood. I know you had some questions on the, the condition of the hood. Um, it's dirty for sure. Like this is all just dirt, bird poop. Um, it does have a, a little bit of a clear bra on just the front piece here all the way across. So that's what this line is. Looks like it might be peeling back just a tiny bit. Um, and then the same is going to be true for the front cap up top. So you'll actually have a clear bra on the front fascia uh, to protect that, that piece there. But it doesn't look like there's any damage to the hood that I can see. I don't see any major rock chips or cracks in the windshield either. So that's looking pretty good as well. Front grill also looking really, really good. Lower bumper. So overall, looks pretty clean. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this open for you and show you the engine bay. So again, a little dirty, but this thing has less than 5,000 miles on it, so it's hardly been broken in. Now, I think our website might be inaccurate, just so you know. This does have the 7.3 liter V8 engine in it. I think our website says otherwise, so that, uh, that's our bad, but uh, just know that that's what this motor is. I'll go ahead and lower this down now. All righty. So uh, we'll go ahead and just kind of go around the outside here. I'll try to give you an angle or all the angles here. Uh, we'll start with the passenger front tire. So plenty of tread on this tire still. I don't know if you can tell on camera, but these things are in really good shape still so you should still have plenty of life left in those coming around to this side just want to show you all the tires just to show you that they're wearing evenly so again good tread on this side all right really nice side mirrors on this one they extend out pretty far here and there's a look at the front cap there. Now one thing that's cool about this motorhome that you don't see on some of the lower end stuff, it does have slide toppers on all your slides so obviously that's going to keep dirt and debris out of the slides. That way you don't have to clean them out every single time you, uh, you want to bring the slide in. I'm going to go ahead and show you the uh, inside here just so you know it is running so I'm hoping you can hear me okay. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off for now. All right, so here's a look at the driver's side here. You can tell here we've got 4,800 miles, give or take, on this sucker right now. Seats seem to be in really good shape. No rips or tears or really any sign of wear. And that goes for both driver and passenger. Um, I did confirm these seats do not swivel or turn uh, 180 degrees. They uh, are fixed, so I was right on that. You do have the uh, upgraded screen here as well. So anyway, let's go ahead and hop back outside here. Um, I am going to show you all of the compartment doors just to show you what's in all of them. In case you're not aware, Ooh, that one might be locked. Let me see if I can open it real quick with my 
C51 key, 751 key. There we go. So that's going to be just storage, and that's where your seat belts reside. In there. Perfect. Now, coming underneath here, this is going to be a look at your uh, Onan generator. So let me go ahead and set this camera down for a second. All righty. So I'm going to go ahead and open this compartment for you. Probably should have done this beforehand, but that's all right. So there's your 4000 Onan. It's got a little over 20 hours on it is all. Um, this is a gas generator, so it's going to uh, feed off of your fuel. So, all righty. Now, coming over here, this is just going to be storage. Now, notice that all your storage compartments in this thing are going to be, um, I forget the branding. I think it's Roto plastic or something like that, uh, but it is a plastic material. It's designed to be easy to clean, easy to wipe out. And obviously it's water resistant, which is nice. Coming further back here, we'll have another storage compartment. Hopefully you can see in there okay. All righty. Rear tires. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this super well here, but um, it looks like the rear tires still have plenty of tread on them as well. Now, the cool thing about the this motorhome is it is equipped with Bilstein shocks from the factory. So a little bit nicer of a suspension. Here's your fill port for your gas, and then all your sewer uh, connections, outdoor shower, all that stuff's gonna be located in this compartment here. <clears throat> Paint's in really good shape. Decals, everything seems to be really well taken care of, minus the uh, bird poop, which is probably our fault. This is a triple slide unit. So you'll have the rear slide with the queen bed, you'll have a wardrobe slide, and then you'll have your dinette slide on the inside here. All right, so you do have another compartment under here. Oh, excuse me, we already did that one. Um, right here, this is uh, your pass-through storage. So you can see that goes all the way through to the other side. And there's a door on the other side as well. You are gonna have um, blind spot monitors and lane um, keep assist built into these on the sides. And then the cool thing about putting the rear slide off-centered like this, it still allows for you to put a rear-mounted ladder to access the roof. It is a full walk-on roof. 30 amp connection is gonna be located on the rear with your TV um, coax connection there. Pretty strong rear bumper on this one with a um, a tow hitch with a seven way and this is rated for 7,500 pounds. And then you do, if you can see through there, get a full size spare tire mounted underneath. Alrighty. So now we're on the passenger side again. Um, you do get a 16 foot power awning on this unit. And it does have a sensor built in, so if the wind picks up, it'll auto retract itself. This side's got a little bit bigger of a compartment door to access that same pass through storage. And it's got this tall section here to store any larger items. All right, just to the right of that, we're going to have another storage compartment here. And then that's the little uh, chuck there on the side. That is for your um, ride right airbags. So that's what's going to make this thing ride and handle a lot better and not feel so top heavy. Now behind that little access panel there, um, that is all the plumbing you would need to winterize the unit. This unit does have heated tanks on it, just so you know. Won't be able to show you that, obviously, but just for your reference. And then your tires on this side, let's feel them. Also pretty good tread here. So all around, I think the tires are wearing evenly, which is good, of course. Uh, furnace exhaust located here. Propane in this compartment here. 
So it says 600 pounds of propane. Don't know how accurate that is, but that's what the sticker says there. Um, opening this compartment, you'll have an outdoor TV. I believe this is a 26 inch TV. So if you like to tailgate and do that sort of thing, it's perfect. And then your water heater, access panel here with an additional storage space just underneath it. So tons of storage cubbies on this unit. Um, 110 power hookups on this side as well. And that, that uh, painted body looks really good. All right, I am gonna show you the passenger side here real quick. Just hopping inside. Again, seat is in really good shape. All righty. So that pretty much sums it up for the outside of this unit. Um, we'll go ahead and head inside, but before I do that, I'm gonna stitch in a really short clip of the roof, so that way you can see the solar on top. I believe it's a 200 watt panel. I'll confirm that later with you, um, but I'll go ahead and stitch that in and then uh, we'll head inside. All right, so hopping inside here, first thing you'll notice, you do have a battery disconnect switch here located next to the door. Um, your awning control is gonna be here, your heated tanks, uh, furnace um, output here. Um, you, this does have electric auto leveling, which is pretty cool in a trailer at this price point. And then there's your solar controller there. Um, you do have a little storage compartment here and access to a lot of the plumbing underneath the sink. And then you're gonna have this little countertop uh, just to extend your counter or workspace that pops up. Now, I know she was wondering uh, what kind of counters these were. These are not considered, I guess, solid surface. These are like a press membrane with like a wrap over the top of them. And it's kind of a good middle ground between your typical T-molded countertop, the little, the cheap stuff you see, um, and solid surface. Um, because those T-moldings, they can peel off and moisture and water can get behind that molding and cause damage. Whereas this is wrapped around the edge and you can't, you can't even really feel it unless you put your finger underneath it. So um, these will hold up pretty well, um, just like a solid, uh, solid surface countertop, but it is not technically a solid surface. Um, you do get a wireless charger here for your phone. This is, um, I guess technically that space I showed you earlier is for a trash can. That's why they have this cut out here, but you could use it for something else if you wanted. Um, before I get too far into the kitchen stuff, I do want to show you the front first. So um, above the entry door here, you'll have your uh, radio system or controls. This does have Bluetooth, HDMI, USB, all that good stuff. Um, a little bit of storage up here as well. More overhead up top. Now coming over here, you'll have a really generously sized TV on a swivel arm. It looks like it might be a 12 volt TV, just looking at the wiring here. So that will run off battery, which is pretty cool. And then you got this really nice bunk bed up top. So pretty straightforward. You're just gonna pull this piece down like so. And now you've got an additional sleep space up top. You could easily sleep two adults, maybe even three kids up here if you had to. And then you've got little cup holders up here, um, little storage bins with power up top as well and then some windows, of course. The AC on this unit is gonna be ducted, so you'll notice these AC vents all the way through, which you can open and shut depending on where you want to send that air. Panning around this way, this is your U-shaped dinette. So it could easily sit four, maybe five people around this table if you wanted to, and then it does make into a pretty good sized bed as well by just dropping the table down. Um, there are four seat belts built into this dinette here. Nice overhead storage with these nice latches that hold the doors open. And all the latches you'll see in here are European style, so you will not see the hinges, which just gives it a little bit more of a modern look, makes it feel a little bit higher end. And then I do currently have most of the windows shut uh, with these blackout shades. All right. I know she likes storage, so I'll keep showing you all the storage underneath the dinette here. 
uh, you're going to have two drawers under each seat here, and they're pretty deep. So same thing on this side here. All right, flipping them back around to the kitchen. Now we'll talk about the kitchen a little bit more. You'll have these three drawers on the outside with some power hookups just above it. Okay. You'll get another one under your sink. Looks like the previous owner left some stuff in here for you. And another one there. Microwave's going to be on the bottom. And then you get a three burner stove on top. Just above that, you'll have more overhead storage. And another one on this side. This sink is a stainless steel undermounted sink. The nice thing about having an undermounted sink is uh, water doesn't pool up and you don't have to worry about that seal around the outside as much. Um, and it just looks a little bit cleaner. Um, and then of course you have your inserts here. So if you're not using your sink, you'll have plenty of counter space to work with. All right, so moving back towards the bedroom here, next to your dinette, you'll have this little pantry, I would call it, with these adjustable shelving units in it. A couple more drawers underneath. Some power, carbon monoxide detector there. Uh, this is gonna be where you control your furnace and your AC. And then here's your main control panel. So this is gonna be for your lights, uh, your water heater, your uh, generator, all those controls located in one spot. This generator does have, like I said, right about 20 hours on it. I am currently running it uh, right now so I can have the AC blasting, it's pretty hot in here. Um, slide out controls are here and the driver's side rear light controls. This is a 12 volt fridge. A couple benefits of that are you're gonna get a bigger, deeper fridge. It does run just off of 12 volt. Only takes about an hour to cool down, which is great. Pretty good freezer capacity in this, this guy as well. All right, now heading back towards the bathroom, your sink and vanity area are gonna be located outside of the bathroom with a nice little sink here. There we go. You do get a medicine cabinet. Some good storage behind there. And then you're gonna have three drawers in your bathroom. And then a pretty good size um, cupboard or whatever you wanna call this. Flipping around to the other side, this is where you're gonna find your actual bathroom. So this is where you'll have your um, shower. It's a walk-in shower. I'm 6'1", I fit in here no problem. I would argue somebody that's even six four, six, five could fit in this bathroom with that skylight up top. Um, this is a porcelain toilet with a foot flush made by Dometic. So a little bit of an upgrade over the cheap plastic ones you'll see in a lot of other campers. Um, spot to put your towels. Of course, you'll have a ventilation fan in here to get all the steam out. And that looks like some more hooks that were mounted on the door here. I don't know if that comes standard or if the previous owner added this but anyway panning around to the bedroom here's your rear queen bed again blackout shades on all your windows you'll have two nice little reading lights above the bed and then you have a small tv back here as well lighting controls here slide controls slide controls because remember your bed's on a slide but you also have this nice uh, wardrobe slide, which I guess I'll show you right now. Um, it's a pretty deep closet here for hanging items. So tons of storage here. And then you do get six drawers, so three on each side. So plenty of storage for all of the clothes that you're gonna bring. Um, this does have a sliding pocket door, kind of a barn barn door style, um, it does just slide shut and it gives you a little privacy if you are bringing anybody with you. So this is again, just kind of a quick look and run through on this unit. 
it's in very, very good shape. All the vinyl flooring, because remember, there's no carpet in this unit, looks to be in really good shape. I don't see any rips, tears, no soft floors anywhere. And I'm a big guy, so I usually notice that kind of stuff when I step on a soft floor. I definitely feel it. Um, but yeah, everything seems to be in really good shape. And I haven't even gone through it yet, guys. So um, anyway, I probably didn't cover everything. Hopefully I did. But if not, feel free to leave a comment down below or message me directly. And uh, thanks for watching.